But it, it, what, what I'm trying to get at, it, we have learned through experience that varying our assumptions, especially when we think we are right and everybody else is wrong, taking the other position, that we might very well be wrong. Remember when, when we're winning, be careful, because that's the moment we're losing. Mm -hmm. That's when we, for all kinds of reasons, don't see what's going on around us. We don't, we're not, we're not um, being self-reflexive, thinking about what we have just thought. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I didn't have my hand up. <laughs> it was a gesture. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else in here? And yeah, this is a good place to talk about um, Wallace Stevens and Ted Warren. We've done that, I think, enough. To, mm -hmm. And the sophists who were constantly playing games. Oh, the, I have a little note in here about the film Munich. Which film? Munich. Oh, no. It's about um, the gangs in. Um, oh, 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 right, right. Okay. Except it's going to be um, Israeli. And the film, when they make the film, there's this scene where. Oh, right. And what event are you in? Is the question the event? And you know, if you, if you think arrivals, you know, and it was an event of that of that of that one. And they help them over. Then there's an interesting discussion of terrorism here. as uh, the taking of hostages and what she refers to as a pedagogical politics. <coughs> and then more of the house. And then the politics of judgment. This is where he gets into his hesitations. <coughs> and he situates himself between, let's say, the sophists and Kant, but sometimes collapses, collapses. Look, what does Kant do? He lives all of these antinomies. When he's stuck, when he's dealing with that which is indeterminate, what does he do? He takes both. Instead of dumping one, it's like this is a rival. He takes both, and it serves him well, politically also, in relation to the king. You know, the conflict of the faculties, and that, and that incredible work is just so interesting. <coughs> uh, he tries to figure out how he can outdo, or get a sit close, some that seating arrangement. You know, the person in the school of law, the, per the faculty of law, uh, the faculty of uh, theology, the faculty of medicine, then the faculty of philosophy. Those are the four. But how can he get to sit closer to you know, the king? While at the same time he's saying, I serve, I serve at your, um, what was the word? Pleasure. Yeah. But he works out these wonderful antinomies to be able to have this cake and eat it too, so to speak. I hate that. It's like that cake and eat it too. But mostly what he's talking about in the fifth day is doing and making, not knowing, because that would be theoretical knowledge, which would be, again, descriptive. Doing is practical knowledge. It's pedagogical knowledge. Can you can you teach other people to do this? But let's go back to the Nicomachean ethics. It's very clear, you know, in that statement that what Aristotle is saying is ethics cannot be taught. Why? It's not a science. A lot of people want to make it a science because it's class bound. They were they already have learned. These kids have already learned because they were in the right group of the population, the right class, okay? Mm -hmm. And they all went to the same country clubs and they had the same rules and everything else, okay? So, when you bring them into the classroom, what you do is only make um, more clear, state them in some, some sort of intellectual scheme of what these uh, uh, virtues are. But you can't instill them into somebody else who has not already picked them up from parents. Hmm. And so 
that's a huge, that's obviously a huge issue. Right? Look at the state of Arizona with all that stupid stuff. We're trying to, you know, wipe it all out, whitewash it out. Well, it becomes really even more problematic when people are pulling their values from mediated sources. And the mediated sources are pulling their values from people who are pulling their values from mediated sources. Mm -hmm. And so you get this real bizarro, you know, self-feeding feedback. So, you know, like if you're going to try to teach your kids something and you're getting your values from TV or whatever. You see what I mean? It's, yeah, I got you. On um, politics, excuse me, I'm, I'm just trying to run out of the next one, please forgive me. Uh, page 76, can one engage in politics without finality? Can one deal with a question without trying to, especially the question of being, without trying to answer it definitively? Because when you do, you've got a description that's fixed. And the violence starts there. One of the things that Leotard says in the, the book on Heidegger, okay, Heidegger and the Jews, is that he said about Heidegger, Heidegger showed contempt for the question of being because he wanted to answer it definitively. Hmm. Now, you know, usually immediately, Know, there's this other question that pops up. Well, you know what I mean? What, you, know, you, just, you just constantly think about possible answers and you never act. Hey, I live in a practical world, man. I've got to make decisions. Well, yeah, you do. But you, know, you, you, you learn very quickly that sometimes they're not very good. And it's not a matter then of, or you, you, you make a bad decision and you see it as good, other people see it as bad. Then you better if other people are seeing it that way. Well, what is it that you're not seeing here? Vary your assumptions. So it's without finality, as the construction of the community is without finality. It's, and we have no third term for it, so we call it community without community. That's how they resolve it. Derrida, Blanchot, Show, and Nazi, they use that sort of uh, X without X. Subjectivity, subjectivity without subjectivity. And then finally he gets over on page uh, 79 and begins to talk about disoil local. This was is considered to be the method of, is it, is it there? Somewhere here. I'm looking at 79, what do you think of? Corax? Is the word dis, disoil local used to? No, it's on the Oh, it's on the turn page, Victor. Thank you. Yeah, this is what I It's where, you, well, it's it, um, translated here as two discourses. It's a methodology of arguing the weaker position. And on a, a given issue, um, this is getting all of the great arguments you argue to, in support of this. You immediately abandon this, and you start arguing for this position. And you, in the, in the, the, the idea is, as I understand it, is that you are trying to keep all of these afloat, okay, at pretty much the same level. <clears throat> it's very, very interesting. I'm thoroughly convinced that there's a relationship, you know, an you know, intellectual relationship between um, Paul Feyerlappen and, um, and uh, Leotard, because they use the, pretty much the same examples. Okay. And... Um, what um, Paul Feyerabend, or Paul Feyerabend, who was a philosopher, philosopher of science, argues is that uh, one must keep all of the various uh, so-called methodologies, or things that are not called methodologies, afloat equally. One must find the weakest argument okay, but for a position and do everything in the world to start arguing for. Because reality is keeping all of these things afloat, and therefore, without finding out. And in the third, the, the title of the book is Against Method, which means 
is not just contra to, but alongside method, terra method. It's gone through three editions. Each one is totally different. Second edition is totally different. Third edition is totally different. And he begins to, he has his, like, his curriculum veto, so to speak. And the third edition towards the end, and he studied drama. And he learned to ham it up, he says. Business? And that's what he does, does as a philosopher of science. Paul Fire author. Interesting. Okay. Um, and, and, he, and he says, what, you know, I want to practice philosophy by, of science by hamming it up. He was against Karl Popper. And he was to have an argument with Lacatus. Um, and they had met at a party once. Uh, th this is what it means to be a colleague, at least in, you know, in a, in a healthful, in a healthy sort of way. And, and they're totally diametrically opposed. And uh, like I told, said something to him like, um, someday we must get together and do a book. I will argue for this, and you will argue that I'm, you know, I totally wrong. The opposite of this. So there was this like disorder logo possibility there. Without resolving it. Then, like it is driving around one day, has a terrible hot, uh, headache, uh, goes to the hospital and dies of a, you know, aneurysm. So, in, in the first edition of Against Method, he then, he says, what Fire often says is, this is half my book, is half a dialectic. And I can only imagine what, or half a disorder of I can only imagine That's actually very sweet. That's love. That's life further. That's love. That's life further. Life fulfilling, enhancing its own. So that is that kind of mentality that Nietzsche is talking about. When Nietzsche is attacked, he doesn't respond. He has a couple of friends who respond with pamphlets. There's a pamphlet war going on, but he does not because he sees it as being reactionary. He says to to be to have, to have a helpful philosophical mind. One must accept everything that one has done and do not live in a reactionary relationship with things that you've done in the past. That's part of my life. And, but, and he also, for an ethic, says you must think twice and thrice about something you're going to do because given his notion of time, it will eternally return. Have you read Kundera's? The, the, the unbearable, unbelievable light, the unbearable light is because he opens up with that Parmenides and, mm -hmm. and um, whoever the other person was. So, yeah. you, you know, about lightness and weight. And, 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 and lightness can be un, uh, difficult to bear. Okay. You know, the gay science, the light science, the, the, the so called um, Nietzsche's book, uh, translated this, it's French, translated many years. It's the gay science. The Zion's of Gaia. Um, and one needs to, to live a kind of balance of life. But except that you're done. And a lot of this stuff is he's been called the great psychologist in the 19th century of Europe, of the continent. Oh my gosh. Forgive me, I've kept you over time. That's